right, a little tour of Juneau is raining. I'm in Juneau, Alaska. I've spent a lot of time here. I love the city. Don't necessarily love the rain, but um, I got lucky. I'm down here for work, and I, I'm not sure if you're aware, but right now the rent-a-car thing in Alaska is just crazy. All the inventory is being taken up. I literally just booked this trip two weeks ago and I got the last car available. They had to upgrade me to an F-150. So I've got like a full cab F-150 and looks like I'll be able to do a little overland review of Juno. I'm going to be sleeping back here tonight. Just kidding. I've got a hotel. I'm probably not going to sleep in the truck, but I do want to show you where the roads lead. There's only a couple roads going this way, that way, and towards the glacier, and then an offshoot. Uh, 18 miles, maybe more than that, but there's some pretty cool places. Hopefully, uh, the rain will clear tomorrow or Sunday, but uh, Juno's a fantastic place. I, I love this town, so let's explore, shall we? Uh, it's a little late in the evening, my favorite place is uh, Heritage Coffee Company, so I'll be going there in the morning, but I'm gonna try to get some dinner. Okay, extremely hard to find parking, and I'm hoping these people are leaving and I can get a parking spot, because I wanna go to this crab shack where they got king crab legs, but uh, it's hard to park here. I'm gonna have to park away and walk down here if uh, these guys don't take off. All right, fish and chips, and my salad, my bread. Let's see here. Well, that's hot still. Just came out of the fryer. Oh wow! Very good. So good. So I'm down at the seaside, Juno here. I just had the most amazing meal over there at the hangar on the wharf. I guess king crab's not in season this time of year. That was weird. They didn't have any king crab on the menu, but I got in, uh, there was an hour wait, but since I was by myself, I got in immediately, lucked out. They gave me a warm, big old thing of bread and butter. I inhaled that, I ordered a salad, and then I got the halibut fish and chips. It was just incredible. I got some of that to go. And then I walked up the hill. So I went uh, more towards the downtown area, way up there. Um, there's a whole neighborhood you can walk in with all these stairs and it, it's just amazing. I have such fond memories of spending time here in Juneau. Um, sometimes I hunt on Admiralty Island, which is a 30 mile, uh, 30 minute boat ride across the strait here. Or I used to be involved with a lot of theater here. I, I just like Juneau, it's such a cool place. Um, all the little bars and coffee shops in this little old downtown district are super cool. And I, I could live here. The population is really small, but if I had a place and a little skiff to go out and hunt, I could do it for a few years at least. A lot of people get sick of it and move away. I've had some friends that have done that. But it, it's an amazing place. Um, so I'm going to spend a few days here. See if there's a, a 4x4 outfit place I can talk to an interview while I'm down here and then I'm going to uh, take you on a tour of some of the roads that you can drive trucks on so it's going to be a fun experience but yeah place is incredible I love it 
city in the clouds built on this mountainside, super steep. It's like Alaska's San Francisco or something. Pretty cool. All right, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the F-150 specifically for overland use. I almost got one in my early stages of looking around for a vehicle, uh, mainly because of the price. The, the number one aspect to these vehicles I think they got going for them uh, is not only their size, fuel economy, but the price. This is a very affordable truck. When you look at other trucks that are larger this size, you know, almost a full-size truck on the market. Now, this is a 2019 F-150. It's the XLT model. Despite saying XLT, yes, Rona, uh, it didn't have that many bells and whistles. Um, of course, you got the 5-liter option, V8. Some of them have the Econo Boost or whatever. I don't think that matters as much. It's all pretty similar. <laughs> Rota, but this one you just got a giant bed I mean you got the full six foot bed and you got more space here than, than my Tacoma the lame thing is they don't have power hookups like my Tacoma did I was surprised by that you don't have the plug-ins back here so that's pretty lame um, the one thing other than its size comfort this thing was so comfortable. It was so nice driving a big truck compared to what I'm used to. Full extra cab. Kids have really been complaining about the access cab and the Tacoma. They hate it. Um, so I am considering getting a newer truck. Um, but it is so comfortable to drive. I'm, I'm just loving driving this thing. It's got the, the display panel here or whatever, but uh, the size, it's very comfortable. And uh, the gas mileage was surprisingly good. I, my gas mileage has been horrid lately in the Tacoma because I keep adding heavy stuff. I need to give it an oil change too. I'm hoping it improves, but uh, I've been driving around town and it's, it's uh, meters hardly gone down. Now the 2019 model, um, it's got, this big console but what's interesting is long windy road was researching a truck and the new brand new models that are coming out they're actually going to have a base here uh i guess that is made for overlanders to edit on their computers you it's uh made to set a laptop well they're almost had that design in mind with this one because you could set a laptop on here but the newer models of the f-150 they're, they're doing that with the, the laptop. But there's not a lot of towing power in these things. But, man, the size is nice. The price is right. They're good on gas. I'm more of a Tundra guy or really a power wagon if you want to overland. But I, I could see if someone gave me a brand new F-150, I would put a tent on it and go around overlandings. But uh, that was a pleasant surprise driving this around Juno. All right, so here we got my overland setup for uh, Juno. I've got my uh, memory foam mattress tent set up there. I've got a pretty nice camp kitchen set up here. I've got a double burner camp stove, even a microwave and a Dometic fridge. Um, I actually have a camp shower set up in a wet bathroom if you can believe it. No, actually, this is the Aspen Suites Hotel. It's been pretty comfortable here. Uh, recommend it if you're going to Juneau. Skeeter's Cabin Campground. There's a campground and a picnic shelter here. Pretty cool. I guess there are some overlanders. Whoa, an RV in Juneau. Crazy. Wow, that's like a, a weird thing. Huh, nice campground though, this guy is state campground. Oh, this thing doesn't turn on a dime like the uh, Tacoma does.
Beautiful little campground though. Kind of dispersed be bear aware. I said there's bear in the area, and then lush green moss, and then walk through the beach to the trees. And you're on a glacial lake with icebergs and a glacier. We got the magic bus here. Magic mystery tour. Oh, he's got an awning. I bet you he's got a wood stove in that thing. Pretty cool. Super exclusive, super private. You don't have any neighbors. I gotta say that this campground in Juneau, Alaska makes the majority of the campgrounds I've been to in South Central look crummy just because this is so private and exclusive and you're in a rainforest. I mean, this is, I could stay here all summer. This is crazy. Super private. There's no neighbors in this campsite. And then you walk through the trees and you're right on the glacial lake in a rainforest. Doesn't get better than this. Man, they must really like camping because you'd have to ferry your trailer here. The Black Series, get the outdoor package there. High clearance, but this is one of the only place you can go. One of three campgrounds in Juneau. Saturday, May 15th, and more rain in Juneau. More rain. Maybe we'll get a break tomorrow. We'll see. Still beautiful, but this is kind of the norm. It is a rainforest. So, welcome home to the rain. I'm going to Heritage Coffee. So in search of adventure, I went to Mendenhall Glacier. If you're here in Juneau, uh, you gotta hit this place. It was five bucks to pay for parking and uh, you get to go to, to the glacier, not all the way to it this time of year, obviously, but you can get a couple different trails. You can walk kind of near the lake or whatever and look at the glacier. So we'll see how it is. Some of them don't learn, they'll just keep going after them. <laughs> you would think after that painful of an experience, they would learn, but it seems like the excitement of getting a horse is too much to bear. Yeah. So is, is this the trail to the waterfall that I'm taking? This is photo point trail. This is oh, the okay. trail that'll get you the best view of the glacier. Okay. So it's not so much missed. <laughs> and then the waterfall trails around that way. Yeah. Okay. And it, even though it's kind of close to the glacier, it doesn't give you a better view. Okay. All right. Maybe I'll check out both. And the little rodent to go. Mm -hmm. Oh, there he is. Deciding which tree to 
cute little guy though. Oh, uh, okay. Maybe they're just irritated with each other. This is a bear trail. Bear trails, bears use our trails frequently. Give them space, yeah, it's an understatement. Overlanding in Juno. Bottom line, it's not a good place to overland. Like I said, I've seen tons of lifted Jeeps and Yodas and FJ Cruisers, and they're spotless. There's no mud on them. Um, I even saw a Subaru with a rooftop tent, which I don't understand where they'd go. There's 40 miles of road. I was wrong. It's not 18 miles. I was thinking of Sitka. There's 40 miles of road here. Uh, Douglas Island was cool. I went and visited my buddy Erling up on Douglas Island, and we went around downtown, but uh, there's not a lot of overland. There used to be Echo Cove where people would wheel and kind of rip up the tundra, but they shut that down. People still go out there, but I mean, you've got one or maybe a couple secret spots to wheel, but they're small tracks. It's protected forest. Uh, not a good overland destination. However, I will say Southeast Ketchikan is freaking awesome. I then My plan is to go to Haynes, take a ferry to Ketchikan, with my truck, with a truck top tent, and from Ketchikan, take that short little ferry to Prince of Wales Island, and just a, a huge network of roads and logging roads, four by four destinations in the mountains, and I'm gonna I'm gonna hunt deer for two weeks and live out of my truck top tent down there. That's the plan. I don't know if it'll happen this fall, maybe next year. Uh, even in Ketchikan alone, has a ton of roads that you could four by four and explore and overland in, not Juno. So uh, don't get me wrong, Juno's an awesome place to visit. I love the food here. It's it's a special place in my heart. I love coming down to Juno. I'm gonna miss visiting this place as much. I, I recently put a notice on my government job. I used to be able to come down here a lot. Now I'm gonna have to uh, you know come down on my own dime for hunting trips when I wanna do that. So I won't be visiting as much. A little sad about this, so it's been a, a bittersweet visit, but if you can, definitely visit Juno. It's good food, the people are nice, um, it's beautiful, but uh, I would rather spend more time in Ketchikan, and that's that's where I'm gonna shoot for, probably in, instead of Juno as much as going to Ketchikan where I can actually overland if I can get my truck there on the ferry. So. In, in short, uh, not a big Ju uh, overland destination here in Juneau. Good place to visit, though, with your family. So let me know what you guys think. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll be back to regular overland episodes in another week or two. Juneau.